Shalom. I want to start off by saying Kal Halal Yamla, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweshai, Basham, Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us the truth and who rule well. Peace and citations unto the Hakim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading this word of sincerity and in truth. Shalom to the hopeful elect. I'm the brother Kwatazab Zayan from the GMS Holland branch, coming back through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Basham, Yahweshai, with another lesson, with another video, another prayer. The Lord willing, this prayer is edifying. Gone. So today I'm going to go into Second Chronicles 6 and Second Chronicles 7. You know, I was proofreading it. I came across a prayer from King Solomon and I was proofreading it. And uh, yeah, this is just a, a beautiful prayer to translate, you know. Now let me start at the prayer is in the end, but I'm going to start a little bit up because that you can get a better understanding. You can read it for yourself too. Second Chronicles one, uh, Second Chronicles six, first one, on down, because then it explains to you that uh, King Solomon he had made the house of the Most High. He made an altar, you know. He made the temple, and he was praying. And um, this chapter is entitled "The Dedication of the House." Wait a second. Solomon's prayer of dedication. That's the title of this chapter. And in the second chapter, it's the dedication of the house of the Most High. That's uh, Second Chronicles 7. So, here, King Solomon was praying to the Most High. You know, he was, he was, he, he's, the building of the temple had ended. And he wanted to dedicate this, his uh, prayer unto the Most High and dedicate the house of the Most High, you see. So he was explaining and and going into certain things like uh, he started his prayer with the the sure mercies of King David, which which we're also gonna read about. Well, let me start at verse thirty four, and I'm gonna read on down until forty two. So this is in the middle of his prayer. He said. Second Chronicles 6 verse 34 If thy people go out to war against their enemies by the way that thou shalt send them and they pray unto thee towards the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name referring to the temple, referring to the altar if they pray to that uh, place verse 35 Then hear thou from heavens, from the heavens their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto a land far off or near, yet if they bethink themselves in the land of whither they are carried captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. And when I was reading this, when I was proofreading this, this reminds me of the situation that we are in right now. You know, like it says in the book of Baruch, we have uh, we shall in the place that we are being held captive. That's when we're going to remember ourselves. And this is exactly what's happening right now. You know, so this is just me talking and thinking as a man. This is not the doctrine that uh, we got from a great millstone, but this is exactly the case that we're in right now. You know, so we have been taken captive. We were sinning. We went off. We went into captivity. But here, in the place of our captivity, we are remembering ourselves. We are calling unto the Most High. You see? Verse 30, 38. If they return to thee, with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whither they have carried them captives and pray towards their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers and towards the city, which thou hast chosen and toward the house, which I have built for thy name. And um, referring to this situation that we're in right now, there is no house, you know, there is no temple where we should pray towards, you know, we are the temple. That's the doctrine that uh, Great Millstone is bringing out. You know, we are the temple because, as it says in First um, Corinthians three and sixteen, you know, he are the temple of the Most High, and 
the ones that destroy the temple of the Most High, the Most High himself will destroy. You see? So they ransacked the temple um, in 17 AD, 70 AD. You know, so now there is no temple, but we have a spiritual temple. We are the temple. You see? So we can't pray towards a place. We Yeah, of course we pray towards the um, Jerusalem, which is in the here in Holland, it is in the southeast. You know, we pray towards that place. You know, we face towards uh, Jerusalem and then we call out to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, but there's no temple there anymore. But still, we face towards Jerusalem. You see? But in this case, um, King Solomon, he was pleading his case with Yahweh Bashem, to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai that. If the people are taken captive, if they be destroyed, you know, and then um, still they remember that they did wickedly and they start to pray to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai again. This is what King Solomon prayed for. Verse 39. Then hear thou from the heavens, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned against thee. You see, so King Solomon was praying for his people's behalf that when they repent after uh, going off and sinning and being taken captive, that they repent and return to the Most High. Uh, King Solomon asked that the Most High please hear their prayers. And actually, who is King Solomon? King Solomon is Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation. You know, King Solomon, uh, uh, Yahweh Shai, one of his previous lives, he was King Solomon. You see, so this is the son of the Most High that's praying towards the Most High for the people in all actuality, you know. And if you can uh, um, receive it, this King Solomon is Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation. You see, verse 40. Now, my power, let I beseech thee, thine eyes be open, and let thine ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now therefore arise, O Yahweh, into thy resting place, thou and the ark of thy strength. Let thy priest, O Yahweh, be clothed with salvation, and let thy saints rejoice in goodness. Verse 42, and this is the part that I translated. O Yahweh, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of, Dave, of David thy servant. Come so... This is actual, actual, actually the, the, the point that I was going towards, you know. This is the prayer that I translated. And it says, O Yahweh, turn not away the face of thine anointed. And who is the anointed in this case? You know, he's, uh, the anointed is talking to Yahweh. So the anointed is Solomon, King Solomon. He was referring to himself that the Most High please hears his cry. Why is he the anointed? Let's see. First Kings uh, 1. And 34. And let Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet anoint him their king over Israel. And blow ye with the trumpet and say, Yahweh, save King Solomon. You see, so King Solomon was anointed. And that's why he's the anointed. You know, where he refers to himself in that prayer. First Chronicles. So like yeah, Second Chronicles. So that's why he said, O Yahweh, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Okay, so he's referring to himself as the anointed. But if you go to Acts eleven, first twenty six. That it shows you that we are the followers of the anointed. You know, and the anointed is Yahweh Shai. You see? He's the Christ. He's the anointed. This is Acts 11, verse 26. 
And when he had found him, he brought him into Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And if you go into that word Christian, Strong's G fifty five forty six, Christianas, 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 which the outline of biblical usage says Christian, a follower of Christ, and the root word is. Strong's G fifty five forty seven, Christos, Christos, Christos. In the outline of biblical usage, it says Christ means anointed. So we are followers of the anointed. You know, Yahweh Shai, the Most High Son, is the anointed. And also, we, through being one with Yahweh Shai, and Yahweh Shai being one with the Most High, we also have been anointed to do this work. Because we are bringing in the sheep, we are... are, are feeding the flock we are um, shepherds of the flock until the head shepherds co head shepherd comes and who's that head shepherd that's Yahweh Shai mm. this is first Corinthians 1 verse 21 now he which established us with you in Yahweh Shai and had anointed us is the Most High, who had also sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. You see? So we ourselves, we have been anointed by the Most High because we, um, through Christ, through Yahweh Shai, are established. So let me read it again. Second, Chronic, uh, Second Corinthians 1 verse 21. Now he which established us with you in Yahweh Shai and had anointed us is the Most High. So the Most High anointed us now to do this work. You see? And we are sealed with the, the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts, which is a down payment. Let me see if I'm correct. Because in the other first, the earnest means a down payment. Yeah, the outline of biblical usage says money which is purchased is given as a pledge or down payment that the full amount will subsequently be paid. So we have been given a down payment, you know, of the spirit and then ultimately it's going to lead into our, our citizenship in heaven. You know, we, we have uh, been given a, a voucher, basically, you know, and we're going to cash it in later. You see? Come. So going back. Second Chronicle 6. So now, you see, in this prayer, it was speaking about King Solomon, but we ourselves are also anointed by Yahweh Bashem Yahushai to do this work. So if you take this prayer and pray to the Most High, then... You know, um, um, the Most High Yahweh will hear our prayers because we all serve, ourselves are anointed to do this. So going back, O Yahweh, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David thy servant. So what did King David do uh, whereby he needs uh, mercy? Let's go to that encounter. First Kings. 15 verse 5 because King David he committed two evils he committed adultery with Bathsheba and before that prior to that he murdered her husband uh, Uriah the Hittite you see so these are two things that uh, King David did whereby he lived a, a life of repentance afterwards but still the Most High had mercy upon him, you know. He still 
um, dealt with King David after committing these these sins. You know, this is First Kings fifteen verse five, because David did that which was right in the eyes of Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. You see? So, King David, in Second Samuel 11 and 3, he first saw Bathsheba. You know? And then, if you read on down to Second Samuel 12, verse 24, that's the, the place where he sealed the deal, well, where he actually went in onto her. You know, so he he plotted and murdered Uriah the Hittite so that he can take Bathsheba, his wife, to to be his wife. You see, and that's the the matter where King David received mercy from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You see, so going back, let me just go to the prayer right now because it's the same. It's the same, um, how you call it, verse. So, Second Chronicles 6 and 42. O Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Remember the mercies of David, thy servant. So this is the prayer that he can send up to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai to receive mercy. Because this is a prayer of King Solomon himself, you know. So I found this a perfect example to uh, take and translate so that you can use. Because this is the beautiful thing. Because while I was proofreading it, then I read the next chapter. And this, it's like, yeah, I pressed the wrong one. Then this is what happened. Second Chronicles 7 verse 1. Now... When Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Most High filled the house. And what is the glory of the Most High? Chariots. So when he was done praying, then fire came out from heaven. You know, that's, that's heavy. Verse 2. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Most High because the glory of the Most High had filled the Most High's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Most High, saying, For He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. You see, so this was the outcome. And yeah, man, that's why I find it beautiful to translate this first so that we can use it in these times that we're living in and actually we're calling also upon the, the, the chariots for salvation because those are the vehicles that are going to be used for us to escape the judgment that is going to come upon this place you see so yeah man um, now I'm going to read it with the translation which it says Yahweh Alahayam Al Tashab Panya Mashayach Yaka Zakara La Khazadya Dawayada Aibatka. So that's the, the pure translation. But now we're living in the time that we need Yahweh Shai, so you gotta say Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Alahayam Al Tashap Panya Mashayah Yaka Sakara La Khazadya Dawayada Aibatka. So what I just read was Yahweh, which Yah is He. Hawa comes from Haya, which is to be or to exist. Ba Hashem, Ba is in, Ha is the, Sham is name. Yahweh Shai, Yah is He, Hawa Shai is salvation. Allah Hayam, Allah is power. And the Yam in the end makes it multi, uh, plural, so it makes it powers. Al is do not, Tashab is a way, Panya. Uh, pun is face, and the ya in the end makes it die face, makes it possessive. Mashayach yaka, Mashayach is anointed, and the ka in the end makes it 
dine anointed, makes it possessive. Sakara, as I remember, la chasat ya, la is two, chasat is mercy, and the ya in the end makes it die mercy. Dawayada, which is King David, <coughs> I bat ka, I bat is serve ka, in the end makes it dine servant. So yeah, man, this is a prayer that you can send up for the sheer mercies of King David because the Most High did have mercy on King David and we all need mercy because like we just read in Second Chronicles 6, it says, which man hadn't sinned. We all sin and we need mercy of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. And the scripture says, to whom who uh, gives mercy, he also shall receive mercy. You see? And the scripture also says that the Most High has mercy upon who he willed. So this is a, a thing of mercy. So we have to pray for Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai to have mercy upon us. So with that, I hope this prayer was edifying. And I want to say, Kal Halal Yamla, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, Basham Rekha Kodash, Shalom Akim.